My name is Ken Armstrong. I'm the president and CEO of North Arrow Minerals. The intent of this brief presentation is to provide an overview of our Kalalagak Diamond Project in northern Nunavut. Uh, like any presentation of this nature, there will be some forward-looking statements, so it's important that you become familiar with the contents of this slide. The Kalalagak Project is North Arrow's most advanced diamond property and will be the primary exploration project for the company in 2014. The property is subject to an option agreement with Stornoway Diamond Corporation, whereby North Arrow can earn an 80% interest in the project by completing a minimum 1,000 ton mini bulk sample to be collected from the Q1 to 4 Kimberlite. After the collection of the sample and the valuation of the Denny diamonds that come from the sample, Stornoway will have a one-time right to back in uh, an additional 20% interest and increase their interest to 40% by paying North Arrow three times the costs that North Arrow incurs in the collection of the sample. Now the property actually hosts a number of kimberlites, but the primary kimberlite that we're focusing on is called Q1-4. to It's located only nine kilometers from the town of Repulse Bay and seven kilometers from Tidewater, so it's really well located. You can see here on a slide is a photo of the area of the Q1-4 to kimberlite, and you can see the ocean in the background. Q1-4 to is the largest diamondiferous kimberlite in the eastern Arctic at 12 and a half hectares, and we have an inferred resource on, on the project. Overall, the collection of a bulk sample, as I'll try and show you, is the next logical step in the evaluation of this property, and if the results are positive, we think that it very quickly will become one of the more important development stage projects in the world. So the May 2013 resource estimate for the Q1-4 to Kimberlite reported an inferred resource estimate of 48.8 million tons at an average grade of 53.6 carats per hundred ton, or just over a half carat per ton. And that takes us down to about a 200 meter level below surface. And there's also then a target for further exploration from 200 to 300 meters depth that could see uh, um, significant upside to the overall size of the resource. The two images on this slide get to show us on the right hand side the surface expression of Q1 to 4 and you can see a part of the uh, pipe is underneath the lake um, and then there's also a portion that's on land and obviously it'll be the portion on land from which we collect the bulk sample in 2014. The other important thing to note is that there are five different phases of kimberlite that have been modeled in the body and, and we'll come back to talk to those phases in a little bit when we talk about the diamond population in the Q1 to 4 kimberlite. But first, just looking at the resource estimate and how it compares to other more advanced projects and, and diamond mines uh, around the world, um, got a couple of slides that just sort of show where Q1 to 4 might, might fit in. It's important to note on these two slides that it's kind of comparing apples to oranges in that Q1 to 4's resource is at an inferred level, and we are comparing to other more advanced projects that have a lot more certainty in their numbers. But the key thing that we're just trying to point out is that in an overall resource with having 26 million carats contained, the Kalalagak Q1-4 resource compares very well and very favorably to some of these other more advanced projects. And similarly, at approximately a half carat per ton, the grade is pretty good too. Um, so we can say that we've got a kimberlite that, uh, that is large, that has a good grade, but as is the case with diamond deposits, the one unknown remains the value of the diamonds that are contained in the body. Um, we have a parcel, an overall parcel size of just over 60 carats that have been recovered from Q1 to 4. The diamonds look very good. They look like typical Canadian production and it's, uh, it's really necessary for us to get a larger sample and we're, we're estimating a, a sample size in excess of 500 carats or so to give us a real indication of what the, the value of these diamonds might be. With Q1 to 4's northern location, um, it, we think that we're going to need a diamond valuation that's at the higher end of the average for, for Canadian, uh, Canadian mines or advanced projects. One important thing that we see in the diamond population at Q1 to 4 are the presence of these yellow stones. And these yellow diamonds have the potential to represent a real sweetener when considering what might we expect for an overall diamond value. The yellow diamonds that have been identified in the Q1 to 4 parcel have been described by uh, diamond tears that have taken a look at the population as being fully saturated uh, yellow fancy stones. Um, obviously we need to get more of them to get a, a true indication of the, if that's the case and we also need to see more of them in the larger diamond sizes. The overall parcel at only 60 carats does not give us very many diamonds that are greater than uh, 0.3 carats um, to really give us an indication on what the overall diamond valuation might be. But the fact is that we see these diamonds in all 
five phases of the Kimberlite that are, have been defined, a Q1 to 4, and we think that's very important. And we see them also in all size fractions of diamonds that have been recovered. So they are, not only are they present in Q1 to 4, they seem to be present throughout the body, and they seem to be present in all size fractions that have been recovered so far. When looking at what the potential positive impact might be of having a population of yellow stones, we are fortunate to have a direct comparable in the Ellendale mine in Australia, which is operated by Kimberley Diamonds. Um, it presently is the sole producing asset of Kimberley Diamonds, and they have an offtake agreement with Tiffany's where, uh, where Kimberley sells all of their yellow production from Ellendale to Tiffany. Uh, the Ellendale mine presently produces over half of the world's yellow fancy diamonds, and those diamonds make up about 80% of Ellendale's overall revenue. Um, the yellows in that mine represent about 9 to 16 percent of the total run of mine production. And in the first quarter of 2013, Tiffany purchased those yellow diamonds for just under $5,500 US a carat. So th that has a, obviously a very positive impact on the overall average value for, for the production from Ellendale in that quarter, which was just under $900 a carat. The overall grade at Ellendale is very low at just uh, right around 4 carats per 100 tons. And the Ellendale mine does not have a very long mine reserve life. When we look at the Tiffany's and their offtake agreement uh, for the Ellendale mine, Tiffany has been focusing on their yellow collection and really spending a fair bit of time and effort in promoting it. And it's had a very positive impact on their overall bottom line as reported in November of 2013. So there is a market for yellow stones. And if we can find at Q1 to 4 that there is a population of yellow fancy diamonds, um, then that could be quite important when looking at the overall potential economics of, of a development at, at that body. So if we want to look at what the impact might be in a generic way of having a population of yellow diamonds in a, in a mining situation, we've come up with a, a model to try and, and show what that impact might be. So on this slide, we have two case studies for a mine that has a population of yellow diamonds in it. On the left-hand side, a mining operation where 5% of the mine's production are fancy yellow goods, with the remainder being regular commercial goods. And on the right-hand side, it shows a similar mine where 10% of the production are, are fancy yellow diamonds. And in both cases, if we just use an average price of, of just under $140 per carat for the regular commercial goods and a price of $4,350 a carat for the yellow goods, we show that uh, on the left-hand side, you end up with an average price per carat of around $300 to $400 a carat, and almost two-thirds of the overall value sit in the yellow stones. And obviously, on the right-hand side, if, if you have more yellows, then they become even more important on the overall valuation. But it's this potential uh, sweetener and this potential upside that we could see at Q1 to 4, if there is a population of, of fancy yellow diamonds, and if we can get a high overall value for the parcel that we're going to collect from Q1 to 4, that it really makes sense to do so. So the plan for 2014 will be to collect a 1,500-ton mini-bulk sample from the Q1 to 4 Kimberlite. It'll be collected through a series of trenches from the portion of the body that's on land. In July and August of this year, the sample will be shipped south and processed in the fourth quarter of 2014. We currently have a portion of our fuel requirement in place. The project is fully permitted, and at $3.7 million, the uh, funding is in place to complete the program as well. So in closing, Q1 to 4 represents a pretty unique exploration opportunity in our view. The project has a large resource, almost 50 million tons of kimberlite at, at just, uh, just over a half carat per ton, located on tidewater in Nunavut. And it's important to point out that this is an area in northern Canada where there's a history of, of successful mining operations on mineral deposits that are located on tidewater, which makes infrastructure so much easier and if the results from this bulk sample come back with a diamond valuation that is positive, it immediately moves the Q1 to 4 Kimberlite to become one of the more important development track projects in Canada and, and really in the world. Thanks very much for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and address them. Our contact details are shown on this slide.